Hello, welcome to PC Jack. In an effort to start adding more variety to my streams, I've decided to start streaming Nintendo Switch games. But, I only have a stream with a single PC setup, so what can I do? Well, that's where the EVGA XR1 comes in. Today we're going to take a look at this pretty interesting capture card and see exactly what it can and can't do, along with how to set it up, and some of the things I like and dislike about it, and whether maybe you should go for any other options on the market. Now it's worth noting that with the release of the XR1, EVG have actually already done a revision of this with the XR1 Pro, which is capable of a couple of additional things such as 1440p, 144fps pass-through, and recording up to 4K 30fps. But here in the UK, I couldn't actually find that model, and the only one I could find was through EVGA, which had the uh, added cost of import taxes and a high delivery cost, so I didn't really bother going for that in the end. Still, I thought I'd point that out if you were considering this capture card, but if you can find the XR1 Pro readily available, then you may want to have a think about that one as well. So firstly, who is this kind of device for? Well, this is going to be the most simple option for anyone that plays on a console and is looking to stream or capture their gameplay. Now, certain consoles like the PS5 can actually broadcast directly from the device itself, but you are going to be somewhat limited by the actual broadcasting capabilities of something like that, so your best bet is to connect your PS5 or any console like that directly to a capture card like this, and then to a PC and stream that way. For today, I'll be going over my experience using this capture card to stream my Nintendo Switch games, which is completely incapable of actually broadcasting in the first place, so it's a pretty straightforward solution in order to actually do so, and running through some of my tips and pointers for setting this up in OBS. So before we take a look at how it works, let's take a look at what comes in the box. Open up the XR1, we get the capture card itself, a quick start guide that is somewhat helpful, a HDMI 2.0 cable, a 3.5mm auxiliary cable, and a USB Type-C to a split USB 3.0 and 2.0 cable. Now, I was a little bit confused by this split USB cable, but the reason behind this is that you may need a little bit of extra power to run this if you're using this with like a laptop, for example. Now, on the box, it does say that this is OBS certified, which basically means that it should be plug and play, but your experience may vary, much like how my experience was not quite the initial setup I was expecting. But it also functions as a UVC, so you can use this for a webcam capture, for example. So all you need to be able to do to set it up is plug the USB-C cable into the XR1, and then connect that to your PC, plug the HDMI cable into the HDMI in, and then connect that to your console. In my scenario, I've docked the Nintendo Switch, so I've just plugged it into the actual dock itself. And then to pass through your console's output to a display, plug your HDMI cable into the HDMI out and then into your display and then you'll be able to see your console's output on a separate monitor. Pretty straightforward all things considered. Now upon booting OBS I was greeted by a black screen and uh, blue LEDs that were stuck on the device itself which was not quite the initial experience I was expecting. But I managed to resolve this by going into the properties for the XL1 capture, selecting custom under resolution and FPS type, setting my desired resolution which in my case is 1920 by 1080 setting my FPS as 60, and also if you want to capture audio via HDMI, you'll also want to select use custom audio device. Now, if all goes well, you should now get a video signal and see your console's display output. But, if you're trying to capture audio via HDMI, you may notice there's no output. So to fix this, under the audio mixer, right click and select advanced audio properties, Locate the XR1 audio output and under audio monitoring, select monitor and output, which should then resolve the issue. And you should now be able to hear your console's audio output through your PC. Once I got through this configuration, it was absolutely rock solid. I did, however, have some cutting out of my video feed and I don't quite know what I selected to fix it, but after this, I didn't encounter any problems whatsoever. To test the XR1, I went ahead and streamed some Metroid Dread for a few hours, and I have to say that the feed actually looked really good to be fair, and I didn't have any problems whatsoever during the stream. I managed to maintain a solid 1080p 60fps stream, which is really good, and I didn't encounter any issues based on my recording hardware, but the actual capture card itself worked flawlessly the entire time. And it's also worth noting that 1080p 60 is the absolute limit that this card can stream and capture at. Now, one of the features that is also included is this dial that can help you control stuff like your audio levels, uh, you can also use it for resetting the device itself, or you can actually press the dial itself in order to activate the advanced pass-through. So, what is an advanced pass-through though? Basically, what this does is allows you to stream and capture at 1080p 60fps, and then when you aren't streaming or recording, you can disable the device itself and continue using it on a resolution and refresh rate that's higher than what this supports. Disabling the capture card itself that acts as a full pass-through without the use of an intermediary between the display and console is not really that much of a feature as most capture cards will do this anyway, so it seems a little bit weird to advertise this, but maybe marketing got a bit carried away. There are more major gripes I have with this device though, and that is the fact that they've got the inputs and outputs on each side of the device. 
Having HDMI inputs and outputs on each side of the device is an absolute KO management nightmare and means that you're not going to be able to position this on your desk without making a total mess. I have managed it fairly well for myself but it's still a little bit cumbersome and irritating to see this design choice. Additionally, while the overall aesthetics of the actual capture card itself is pretty cool with the LEDs and the mirrored finish, the actual surface is an absolute dust magnet. And also, you really want to avoid touching this with your hands as it will get a lot of fingerprints on it. Thankfully, I have been able to avoid that, but it is already collecting dust. It's only been on my desk for a couple of hours. So, regular cleaning is going to be on the agenda unless you simply don't care about that. Lastly, while this card is a little bit older by now, considering the target audience is going to be people that are using consoles such as the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, both of which support HDMI 2.1, this device only supports HDMI 2.0, so you may have to bear that in mind if you do decide to go for this capture card. I do appreciate the added support for 480p, which is really useful if you're playing a lot of retro titles on older consoles, so it's nice to see that has been included with this. Overall, for my needs though, in particular to stream Nintendo Switch games, I've been really pleased with the XR1, and it's done everything that I've needed to do. And while it isn't quite as intuitive as it can appear, it certainly gets the job done, and while you have competitors such as the Elgato HD60+, Plus, it is a slight bit more costly to go for that option by literally about nearly £10, but it's still another option you may want to consider just in case this doesn't have everything that you're looking for. Again, it's not a perfect capture card, but it should cover most of the needs you would have as a content creator. And if I'm being totally honest, I expected to be fairly unimpressed by this device based on the consensus online, but I'm actually somewhat content with this capture card, which is maybe the best way to describe a product such as this. I guess. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. If you're after more PC Jack content though, then make sure to check out my Twitch channel where I live stream every Monday and Thursday. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while helping to fund everything I do on the channel for you guys. You find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.